Rejoice, Jerusalem, and all who love her. Be joyful, all who were in mourning. Exalt and be satisfied at her consoling breast. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Today, as we come before our Father in heaven, let us call to mind the times that we have failed and ask God for his divine mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have Christ, mercy. Have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And let us pray. O oh God, who through your word reconciled the human race to yourself in a wonderful way, grant, we pray, that with prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten towards the solemn celebrations to come through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the second book of Chronicles. In those days, all the princes of Judah, the priests, and the people added infidelity to infidelity, practicing all the abominations of the nations and polluting the Lord's temple, which he had consecrated in Jerusalem. Early and often did the Lord, the God of their fathers, send his messengers to them, for he had compassion on his people and his dwelling place. But they mocked the messengers of God, despised his warnings, and scoffed at his prophets, until the anger of the Lord against his people was so inflamed that there was no remedy. Their enemies burned the house of God, tore down the walls of Jerusalem, set all its palaces afire, and destroyed all its precious objects. Those who escaped the sword were carried captive to Babylon, where they became servants of the king of the Chaldeans and his sons, until the kingdom of the Persians came to power. All this was to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah. Until the land has retrieved its lost Sabbath, during all the time it lies waste, it shall have rest, while seventy years are fulfilled. In the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, in order to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah, the Lord inspired King Cyrus of Persia to issue this proclamation throughout his kingdom, both by word of mouth and in writing. Thus says Cyrus, king of Persia, All the kingdoms of the earth the Lord, the God of heaven, has given to me, and he has also charged me to build him a house in Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Whoever, therefore, among you belongs to any part of his people, let him go up, and may his God be with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. The responsorial psalm, let my tongue be silenced if I ever forget you. Let my, my tongue, tongue be silenced if I ever forget you. By the streams of Babylon we sat and wept when we remembered Zion. On the aspens of that land we hung up our harps. Let my tongue be silenced if I ever forget you. For there our captors asked of us the lyrics of our songs, and our despoilers urged us to be joyous. Sing for us the songs of Zion. Let my tongue be silenced if I ever forget you. How could we sing a song of the Lord in a foreign land? If I forget you, Jerusalem, may my right hand be forgotten. Let my tongue be silenced if I ever forget you. May my tongue cleave to my palate if I remember you not, if I place not Jerusalem ahead of my joy. Let my tongue be silenced if I ever forget you. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians, brothers and sisters. 
God, who is rich in mercy because of the great love he had for us, even when we were dead in our transgressions, brought us to life with Christ. By grace you have been saved, raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heaven of Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from you, it is a gift of God. It is not from works, so no one may boast. For we are his handiwork, created in Christ Jesus for the good works that God has prepared in advance, that we should live in them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. And God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him might have eternal life. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you. Jesus said to Nicodemus, Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned, but whoever does not believe has already been condemned, because he has not believed in the name of the Son of God. And this is the verdict, that the light came into the world, but people preferred darkness to light, because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light, and does not come towards the light so that his works might not be exposed. But whoever lives in truth comes to the light, so that his works may be clearly seen as done in God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, come Holy Spirit, come by the most powerful means of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, your well-beloved spouse. Today, we have a couple readings, and St. Paul talks about the grace of God. And sometimes it's difficult to put a finger on the grace of God, to go, what is that grace? And if you look at our world today, and you see kind of the predicament that we're in in a world where we're kind of closed down, travel is shut down, and it seems like it's stripping away the joy of our lives. Seeing our grandchildren and our great-grandchildren having family functions and that center of love, which is the family, it's hard because now society and doctors are out there saying, oh, you can't do that, even though we've done that all of our lives. And we've become afraid of one another. And I understand, but what it does is that fear strips the joy from our heart and our mind. So I think it's an easy way to understand the grace of God. Because with that joy, that joy is a grace. Because when we see the love and the fruits of God in our life, we see the things in our life that are worth living for. When we see our children and our grandchildren and all those things, we have joy about them. We see the good things that God has given us. So it gives us joy in our heart. And it resonates as a grace from God, those gifts from God that only he can give. The relationship with God is also a grace. It doesn't come cheap, in a sense. We have to put in the work. We have to ask God to be present in our life. And it's about being present in real time, in the moment, to see God working. If we're looking too much in the past, 
we concentrate on the evil of the past or our things we did well. And we hold those up as this is who I am. But if we look to the future, all we do is plan. And all we think about is maybe material things or what we're going to do here or what we're going to do there. But when we live in the present, we actually spend really quality time with one another. Every word means something. Every aspect of love that we share with one another means something, and we get to feel that in real time. And we start to feel the presence of God in our life. And that's what we're talking about in the second reading today. Going to the gospel, Jesus refers to it as dark and light. The light being right, the grace of God, being able to see what's in front of us, the pitfalls, the beauties, the thanksgivings that we give, what God has truly done and why he has saved us, why humanity is so important to God that he would send his only begotten son to suffer and die for us in a corrupt world that we live. Why would he do that? Why would he show us that? Because we are a reflection of him, especially when we do good. We don't have God within us, but we reflect God in our deeds, in our actions, in the love that we share with one another. And then people look at you and go, oh, you're so good. No, God's so good. You're reflecting God's light at that moment to the other in the darkness. And it's our love, it's our reflection of God's love in the world today that shows God's light in the darkness in which we live. So when we think about that, and we ask God to forgive our sins, when we come to Mass, when we go to confession, when we pray our rosaries or our divine mercy chaplets, or our sort of prayer that we pray during the day, what it is is we're asking God's grace to come upon us. We're making ourselves fertile ground so that light can be absorbed in us so that we can reflect that light to others. And that's why we share the love of God with one another. So today, let us be reflections. Let us be mirrors, in a sense, of God's light in the dark world that we live in. And let fear dissipate. Let it be destroyed by the love of God which we reflect. Let us stand and pray. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and on the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body in life everlasting. Amen. Father, we come before you in praise and thanksgiving. We thank you for hearing us, for we know you always hear us. Consider these needs and we beg you to answer them. Father, we continue to pray for our church. We pray for our Holy Father, his cardinals, bishops, for all priests, deacons, religious. We pray for the holy faithful that are attending Mass and those that are estranged. We ask, Lord, the grace of your spirit to find us in relationship with you. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord we pray for the sanctity of life from conception to natural death. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord we pray for the triumph of the Immaculate Heart of Mary in our world, within our church, within our families, and within our own hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray for those who come to us in crisis, our military, law enforcement, firefighters, first responders, hospital personnel. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray for the sick of our parishes, for the sick within our families. We ask, Lord, your healing touch to be upon them. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray for you, for your family, your friends, your circle of influence, for those that have asked for your prayers, and especially now the prayers in the silence of your hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. We pray for Bob and Cheryl Cordes, for whom this Mass is being offered. 
Let us pray to the Lord. Father, these are our prayers. We ask you to hear them through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and also through the intercession of the Virgin Mary, our Mother, as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Please be seated. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth is given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Let us stand and pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We place before you with joy these offerings, which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that may, may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as is fitting for the salvation of all the world, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. By the mystery of the Incarnation, He has led the human race that walked in darkness into the radiance of the faith and has brought those born in slavery to ancient sin through the waters of regeneration to make them our, your adopted children. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song of adoration, and we, with all the host of angels, cry out and without end acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, it entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and giving thanks, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking in the body and blood of Christ, that we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, David, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her most chaste spouse, with the blessed apostles, with St. Margaret of Scotland, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life. 
may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At our Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days. And by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope of the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer safely a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to have you enter under my roof, but only say the word of my soul. start with this time today. Uh... 
Let us stand and pray. O God, who enlightened everyone who comes into the, this world, illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty and love you with all sincerity through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Uh, just one announcement. Uh, we will not have Mass <clears throat> this Friday here at St. Margaret Mary. I'm going on a little... Uh, vacation during the week. I had about a week week off this year during COVID, so I'm going to take some time uh, to go out to camp and just be amongst nature. Um, so I will be back on Saturday for this Mass, so we'll have Mass Saturday of next week. Thank you. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Um, there will be still adoration on Friday. Is that correct? No. Still op be open for adoration. Yeah. Church will be open for adoration. So you can come and pray. Also, I think there's Friday adoration at St. Anthony's. I think I'll be back Friday night. So hopefully I'll be, pray that I'll be back for confessions at 6. Thanks. Blessed are the poor.